Ham Radio Prep has a new course for MCOM, Emergency Communications, dealing with uh, RACES, ARIES, OXCOM, and a few other things. If you are interested in learning more about radio prepping, radio preparedness, and just general radio MCOM, a lot of people get into ham radio because of MCOM. So this course is a step in the right direction. I'm looking forward. I'm probably going to end up taking this course myself. And if you are interested in this course, you can save a 20% discount off of the link in the description below from this course and every other course with the coupon code of Jason20. Ham Radio Prep sponsors this channel, and I enjoy talking about the new products they have. So let's take a look right now. Okay, I'm here with Jim in for BFR from Ham Radio Prep. And you guys have a new course that you want to talk about, as I understand it. And I know a little bit, I, uh, James sent me an email a little bit about it, but I'm going to learn myself right now. So, Jim, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. And, hey, thanks uh, let's for having hear, me. Yeah, you bet. Let's hear what you got to say. Sure. So, new course we have at Ham Radio Prep is called Emergency Communications 101. And the whole idea is basically, well, it, it's founded in the fact that our students who take our license exams have said, you know, we ask them at the end, hey, what else do you want to learn about? And MCOM was a big thing for them. So we've been putting this together. Uh, and as we started to put it together, it was really interesting, too, because we would engage with MCOM leaders and they were all like, yeah, we need something like this. Yeah, do something like that. Glad to hear that. And, and just at random, I'd be bumping into other hams I knew and like, oh, heard you're putting together an MCOM course. That's a great <laughs> idea. So nice. Um, so that it really works out well. And I think there's going to be a great demand for it. And it's ready to go now or you guys are releasing it this month in September? Re ready to go now. Launched okay. it uh, about 10 days ago. Okay. And it's three parts. So we are going in with the assumption and we might be wrong, but we're going in with the assumption that our, our license course students are going to start with this course. So they're really going to be starting from, I just passed now, what do I do kind of place. So mm -hmm. it starts off like your, your experience in MCOM would start off. You're going to join a group like Aries or Racy's and they're going to do community service events. They're going to do parades and marathons and those kind of things. So the mm -hmm. whole first half of the course is getting you up to speed through the scenario of, we call it the big city marathon. And what do you need to know to get started? Everything down to buying a radio, pushing the push to talk button, programming in a repeater, all those kind of things, uh, we're going on a net, all those kind of things are covered in the first half of the course to mm -hmm. make sure that you have the the real true basics on you could walk out tomorrow and be part of an event. Yeah, I, I, I get a lot of comments on some of my, uh, I have some training videos on, um, well, we there's a technician class and general class that I've done that I've recorded from a local club. And just on some other random videos here and there, I often get comments that say, you know, the licensing exam does not really teach you what to do afterwards. So it Correct. sounds like you guys are kind of uh, sort of trying to tackle one of those, at least one of those things. Yeah, absolutely. So last year around this time, we came out with a course called uh, the HF Masterclass. Right. And that was people who just graduated. I want to get into HF. I don't have an mm -hmm. Elmer. What are the things I need to know? And it took them through buying a radio and a power supply and an antenna and all those kind of things. So this does a similar thing for people who want to get into MCOM. Mm -hmm. it, it, like I said, it starts you off with that getting grounded in public service background, how to use a radio. And then it kind of moves on to looking at all the different groups. So mm -hmm. there there's Aries. You, you think about the traditional MCOM groups, right? You're going to think about Aries or Racy's or Oxcom, but mm -hmm. there's groups like Skywarn and Hurricane mm -hmm. WatchNet and other groups, uh, um, Saturn is another group with the Salvation Army and the Red Cross has their own mm -hmm. MCOM folks. So mm -hmm. there's, it's it's broader than just those three main groups, but we really spend the bulk of our time talking about the three big ones, Aries Races and Oxcom, with the idea being that by the time you get through this, you've learned went through and, and looked at all the, the things that they want you to learn as a beginner. And, and those things are uh, 
already things we've talked about being on a net using a radio, but there are things like what does FEMA do and how do you, how, mm-hmm. what's about talk about the FEMA incident command system, right? Mm-hmm. All three of those groups want you to know that before you get into their group and really start to do things. So we cover that. Uh, and then we went on and, and looked at some of the things like, Deployment. So people are going to go, oh, what I really want to do is when there's a hurricane, I want to get out and I want to deploy to like the hams did to Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And and there were 21 hams that went there in 2017. But we really do a whole lesson where we deep dive into what actually happened. And it starts off with the ARL going, all right, we need 50 qualified hams. And by the end of that, they only got 21. And the 21 they got did not have even have all the skills they wanted, like WinLink. So mm. we took the, those lessons learned and we pulled them into the course as well. So really feel like it's a nice, well-rounded, once I know this, I can go to a group, my local, whatever group that I want to work with and say, hey, I know the basics. Now, what are the special things that I need to know to work in? Atlanta Aries or, mm-hmm. you know, Washington state Oxcom or, you know, what are, what's the special sauce of that? And that group won't have to teach you. Okay. Go off and, you know, go off and read about FEMA stuff because right. you'll already have that background. That's great. That's great. I hadn't heard that before about the Puerto Rico thing. I had always thought, now this was after the fact, you know, my, my channel was fairly small in 2017, but I always thought that that would have been an excellent time to go down there and kind of do some recordings about what hams do in that type of situation. Parts of the island of Puerto Rico were without power for like eight or nine months. Absolutely. So, we, and I, t- I talk about that a lot when people bring up the whole, oh, why do you need a radio anymore? Because of, we have cell phones today. And I'm like, look, you know, this yep. just happened a few years ago. I mean, it's, it's kind of ridiculous to think that, you know, your power and internet are going to be up every day. So it's, it's, yeah, that's an interesting topic you bring up. So I, I look forward to reading more about that. Yeah, so so three big sources there that that were interesting. Um, there was a, a we're, we're out of Metro Atlanta, and there was a Metro mm-hmm. Atlanta ham that deployed, and we were able to kind of he told his story, and we were mm-hmm. able to go through and and hear what he had to say, and they explain and he explained, hey, you know, preparedness wasn't there. Uh, they were looking for bilingual people that was mm-hmm. difficult to come by. Mm-hmm. Um, they wanted to use Winlink and Nod a lot, and not everybody had it. Uh, when they got there, um, they knew that there were hams on the ground, but the hams on the ground were all kind of saying, well, if something happens, we'll have the repeaters. All the power went out, all the repeaters <laughs> went down. So they didn't have that backup thing, they said. Mm-hmm. Uh, finally, we we also, uh, two things, two other places where we did a lot of research was the ARL put out a really detailed postmortem. Uh, so we were able to go through and capture their thoughts. And uh, there was another uh, ham that deployed out of Tennessee as well that was able to uh, talk about his experience. And we found a video where where he explained some of his stuff as well and brought up some of these things as well. So it was really kind of nice, well-rounded being able to give a good example. And like I said, lessons learned here are really going to be what's in the course and really helped inform the course and how we decided Mm -hmm. to do the course design. Well, that sounds like an excellent plan. It sounds like a great idea. I'm glad you guys are doing something like that. Um, so is it, um, it's, it's, it's its own individual course, I assume, like your HF master class? Yes, it is its okay. own individual course. It's, it's uh, 99 bucks. Mm-hmm. And for that, you're going to get about five hours of video. And okay. all the le- which is longer than I think the master classes. I know it's mm-hmm. longer than our license courses. Mm-hmm. I never, haven't gone back and looked between the two. But it's also got uh, a ton of exercises and those kind of things. So you're able to follow along. And uh, we did some things like uh, for the early part of the course, you know, we we know that people are going to want to program their radios for FM repeaters, for DMR and D-Star. We put together some worksheets that kind of said, here's all the things you need to do to make sure you have the information you need to gather before you go to program your radio for DMR. And we all know that's really complicated. So hopefully we're going to take some, uh, take some of the, the complication out. Uh, okay. Like I said, exercise checklist, those kind of things. So we've got a, a, a go kit checklist where you'll just be able to download it and say, all right, you know, what's the, you know, what are the 20 things I need to have? And, you know, there's mm-hmm. some things you think about, like, 
uh, oh, I got to have coax, got to have radio, got to have batteries. What about connectors and spare fuses and those kind of yeah. things? The, those little things as well mm -hmm. uh, to kind of help make sure you're you're really prepared. We have had that discussion numerous times on some live streams I've done. I'm like, just go activate parks on the air. You will realize what you are missing. When you get out to the field and try to set up, you're like, oh, I don't have a BNC to SMA connector with me or whatever the case is. So, yeah, that's a great idea. That having a checklist like that's a great idea. I just tried to do that on my back deck the other day. I took my go kit out and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go and use one of my antennas with my mm -hmm. go kit. Uh, and I didn't have the right adapters. I had to come and, and find them. So it, yeah, yeah, it's like that I had. And the other tip that we have is, you know, pack everything up, make it work, then pack it up and leave it alone. Yeah. And so it's ready when you're ready to go mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. uh, um, I'll tell on, Myself, not not a, a, a kind of a poda trip. A buddy and I uh, went to Little Cayman Island because mm -hmm. we wanted to activate that. We were down in the Caymans for a weekend. And we got all the way out there and he left his power cord on the table in the hotel. And oh, it was a, a flight and a drive away. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if you could pack that stuff up when it works, uh, that's the, really the best way to do it and make sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, good, good. I'm glad. To, how much? Uh, okay, you said it's been out for ten days. How much interest have you seen yet? We've gotten some good interest. There have been some some of our hams who have already finished the course. So, good. so they're they're speed reading through and uh, they're, they're giving good feedback. So uh, happy to see that so far, and hopefully the awareness is going to really pick up as we go along. It's got like our other courses. I don't think mm -hmm. people appreciate this enough is that it's not like a one and done thing. So yeah. we, you get lifetime access. So mm -hmm. if you're, if you're kind of going, wait, I wanted to do that checklist. I, maybe you weren't ready to do an HF go kit when you took the course, but now you are, that's still available before you go, you download mm -hmm. the checklist, you're ready to go. And like our other license courses, right? If you're, if you take the general course and you want to know about propagation again, well, you can go back and look at the propagation part of the course. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Have it, have it forever. Yep. Does um after doing the HF, this is kind of this might be a little off topic. Um, mm -hmm. after doing the HF master class and now this course, and maybe you haven't been out long enough uh, to to tell yet. Do you kind of get ideas about questions people are asking about what you might do for a new course in the future? We're always getting questions. Um, yeah. and and that's good. Even you know we go to Hamfest and we we solicit mm -hmm. them right. So so sure. And when, when somebody's done with the course, we say, hey, what do you want? what do you want to learn more about? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's a long list. So we were yeah. just talking a little bit about this yesterday. There's folks who say, hey, I want to really get into satellite operating or mm -hmm. I want to learn Morse code. Can you put together something for Morse code? Uh, so we we need to kind of start sorting through and figuring out what the next thing might be out of all mm -hmm. those things. So we don't have a, we don't have a great, now we're done with this. We're going to go off and build something else. But what we do have is time where mm -hmm. in most years, it, when we, we kind of have the fall to catch up and then starting in January, we start on a revision of the license course. Well, there's no yeah. new license revision this year. It's, it's, right. it's an off year for the VEC changes. So we'll okay. have some extra time to do some stuff. Uh, can't tell you what that is yet. Cause <laughs> I don't think we know yet. Maybe James knows and has it in the back of his head, right. uh, but he hasn't told me yet. So, you know, we're, we don't know enough to to really share that, but um, mm -hmm. as you know, you see us at Hamfest, or you just see us on social media. Say, hey, I want to I want to do this, and we'll see if we can put something together. Well, this sounds like a great idea. I um I might go grab the course myself and go through it because you know. I have said before on, on a lot of videos, you know, I, I, I do these videos and tell people how to do stuff or here's how you do this or here's how you program this. Rig. I've said multiple times, and this is tr still true today and will continue to be so, I learn more than I feel like I teach because I got I was like, oh, here's a new radio. Now I got to go learn how to use that. Or here's WinLink. Now I got to le learn how to do that or something like that. So I'm sure I, there's something in that course that, that I would be able to learn myself. I definitely refreshed myself with WinLink for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, we have, uh, so I, uh, so it's 19 lessons and of those, I am the instructor for 16. Uh, yeah. And then we had uh, yeah. one, uh, one is um, James Cribs are uh, leading mm -hmm. it. And we put in a practical thing where 
Uh, we talked about the big city marathon and those kind of things. And we were able to get embedded with the Peachtree Road Race in Atlanta, which is the world's largest 10K. 60,000 people go on July 4th. So wow. James and I both went out. We both recorded our experiences. So not only did we kind of learn, we got to share that immediate immediate hey this happened and this is what uh -huh. we learned some things went great and some things we went yeah we probably should have done that differently next time so yeah. that was pretty yeah. cool good. We've all, good we also have uh at the end um max uh n4 ml uh did mm -hmm. a lesson he did the wind link lesson which was helpful because he's better at that than i am mm -hmm. uh and then he also did a lesson on batteries and or on off-grid power so uh, sure. it's just some basics on batteries. And how do you calculate how much you need to have for battery capacity if you want to go mm -hmm. to a park and sit for six hours or mm -hmm. have a 24-hour go kit or those kind of things? So we've got that in there as well. Uh, and then we put in a lesson on kind of family communication. So let's say power goes out, the grid mm -hmm. goes down, you need to talk to your family at home. Well, you may have a ham radio license, but mm -hmm. they probably don't. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing that? And when are you doing that? And what are the tools? And how are you getting information when that stuff goes down? So we've got a whole lesson that talks about that as well. So there's some personal preparedness things to go along because you can't deploy to Puerto Rico for three weeks. <laughs> Unless you know your family's okay at the same time, right? Right. So you right. got to have uh, you got to have both to really uh, mm -hmm. do that. So that's why we think it's a good complement to include in the course as well. So we're excited. That's great. That's great. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how it works out for you guys. And like I said, I'm I may go grab it myself and go through some things and interested to learn that type of thing myself. I the the Puerto Rico idea. You kind of had sold me on it when you started talking about Puerto Rico because I've talked a lot about that in videos about how you know. It's not just, you know, people People think preparedness is all about zombie apocalypse or some country invading the USA. And I'm like, no, no, no. Natural disasters happen every day. Hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's, it's that level of preparedness also that's very important, I think, that a lot of people kind of overlook. Absolutely. I think it made a really terrific case study. We spend, it's one of our longest lessons too. We spend about 20 minutes on that topic. Usually mm -hmm. we try and go for 10, 12 minute lessons. We spent mm -hmm. 20 minutes just on that topic because it's so important and it's so interesting for people who wanted to, who want to do these kind of things. So mm -hmm. uh, there's mm -hmm. some experiences in there of people who are on the ground that you'll, you'll be able to find out about. And, and I think it will show you why you need to build a, build a kit, build your skills, mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. your skills, those kind of things. Right. Cause, and that's another thing we, we reinforce and I don't know if we do it enough, but you need to keep practicing. You need to take mm -hmm. that go kit out mm -hmm. fairly often. Uh, and, and I said in the course, uh, virtually verbatim is if I'm going to have an MCOM person, who's going to, you know, deploy an HF, I probably want him to be a POTA person because yeah. there's so much out there right now. And they've got that experience of, Hey, I can be set up in 20 minutes somewhere mm -hmm. and be on HF and send them messages via voice or data or, you know, however they like to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a big part of the skills you're going to need. Totally. Yep. I completely agree with that. So good. Well, I'm glad that you guys have done this. Thank you for taking the time today to, to come and talk to us about it. Um, I will put a link for those watching. I'll put a link in the description below directly to this course. And um, I think my, does my discount apply to that? I think it does. Yes. James yeah. said, I asked and uh, James okay. said, if you use your discount, uh, people will get the break. Okay. All right. So Jason 20 for a 20% off of this course and all the other stuff that Ham Radio Prep advertises and has available in their packages. Thanks. Jim, thank you for your time today, man. My um, pleasure. This, anytime. Yeah. This is really good. And I look forward to seeing how it works for you guys. Great. And look forward to getting your feedback on it as well. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Jason, thanks.